Hello, everyone. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about process synchronization. Now, this is actually something that uh, both the Flashpoint Secure Player and Old CPU Simulator, which is one of my other softwares, uh, needs to do. Uh, and so I'm actually going to demo this with Old CPU Simulator just because uh, it's a command line app and it's a little bit easier to show there. So <clears throat> let's take a look. I've already got the Windows uh, command line open and I've typed in a command that can be used with Old CPU Simulator. What this uh, does is it runs games at a slower speed as if it were running on an old computer. So let's take a look at that with the game Real Pool. Alright, and I mean, it's real cool. Um, <clears throat> if I alt-tab back out of this, also interesting to note, this uh, uses the default Windows full-screen behavior, so you can see even though it's full-screen, I can have Windows over top of it, so I just thought that's interesting to uh, note that this game behaves that way, because uh, we talked about that in the previous episode. <clears throat> anyway. You can see that uh, Old CPU Simulator is running now, uh, and this makes sense because it has to be running uh, while the game is open in order to regulate its speed. But what would happen if I Control plus C this, right? Uh, killed the process. Let's take a look. So, exiting Old CPU Simulator also caused the game to exit, right? If we look in Task Manager, we can see, so there is old CPU simulator running, and then there is the game running in a separate process. Now, if we exit this process, then old CPU simulator also goes away. You can see that it ended, and that kind of makes sense, right? Uh, old CPU simulator is probably just waiting for that process to exit. But we can also do the reverse. Um, so, let's get it started back up again. And we select old CPU simulator and end that. And that also caused real pool to close. And that makes less sense because real pool is, you know, a game from like the late 90s, it's obviously unaware uh, that old CPU simulator exists, so there can't be code in RealPool to check for old CPU simulator and close itself uh, when that stops. But there also can't be code in old CPU simulator uh, to do this, because when we end the task from Task Manager, it doesn't have a chance to execute anything else, it just has to go immediately right? It's just dead. So how are we doing this? There has to be some trickery afoot. Quick side note, um, in the case of old CPU simulator, it's obvious why process synchronization of this sort is necessary, because it's actively affecting the game at all times to slow it down. In the case of Flashpoint Secure Player, it's less obvious because it's just kind of passively in the background. Um, the reason why this is also necessary for Flashpoint Secure Player is because we don't want it to crash, but the game to continue running, because we want to be able to clean up after it. So if Flashpoint Secure Player crashes for whatever reason, then we also want the game to exit, because that way uh, we can perform crash recovery on the next startup. <coughs> so the secret here is job objects. Um, so, on Windows, multiple threads can belong to a process, and multiple processes can belong to a job. I've actually made it so that here in Task Manager, if I go to the Details view, uh, you can actually see the job object that things belong to. They can have names, but they typically don't. They typically just have an ID number. So you can see um, some of these, they just don't belong to any job, but many of them do. Many of them have a number uh, because they belong to a job object. So multiple processes can belong to the same job, and jobs allow us to apply some uh, specific rules uh, for how processes should behave. So that's what we're going to take advantage of here. The first thing that we do here is we just take in the process. If it's null, then we use the current process, but typically we're not going to be doing that. 
Um, and then here is where we create the job object. At this point, we don't have any sort of rules or anything defined for how it's going to work. We just create a new empty job object. And then down here, we specify the flags for this job object to use. There's actually quite a few of these uh, that you can use, but the one we're interested in is called the job object limit kill on job close. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that when the handle to the job is closed, the processes in the job are killed. Uh, now, it's important to understand, right, having a handle to the process uh, does not mean that we are in the job, right? It's the same as, uh, like, creating a process. You can create a process and get a handle to the process and not be in that process, right? You just have a handle to it. It's the same thing here. Uh, we're creating this job object, but that does not mean that our Flashpoint Secure Player is going to be in the job object. It just means that we're creating a job object and doesn't have any processes in it yet, right? And so we get a handle to the job object. If this handle is ever closed, uh, then it will kill uh, the processes in the job object, which is not the Flashpoint Secure Player itself necessarily. It's the uh, other processes uh, that we're going to start. <clears throat> so this flag is going to kill all the processes in the job when that handle is closed. And the thing is, right, the, the secret sauce that makes this work, right, is that if the Flashpoint Secure Player crashes or, or exits for whatever reason, um, then that handle, right, because it only belongs to us, right, we created it and we don't give it to anybody else, it's not inherited by any other process, um, because that handle um, belongs to us, when the Flashpoint Secure Player closes or exits or crashes or whatever, that is going to invalidate that handle because uh, the operating system is going to clean that up. And so it's going to result in it killing the processes that we assign to this job object. So we'll see that in action. Um, the other flag that we assign here is silent breakaway OK. Um, this is because, right, when we start the game and the game has its own you know, process, it might then go and create other processes, right? It, it might um, <clears throat> go and create, like, uh, maybe maybe there's, like, a link that opens up in the web browser, right? And so you click the link, and then the web browser opens up, uh, and that starts a new process. And we don't care about those processes that are being created um, by the game, right? Because we don't want it to be, like, then you close... Uh, it then Flashpoint Secure Player exits, and it closes the browser as well, right? At that point, it's it's unrelated. It's it's outside of our control. And so we want uh, child processes to break away from the job. Uh, so then down here, we just do some, like, marshalling stuff. This is just because we're going to be calling a native function uh, from C Sharp, and so you need to do a little bit of marshalling in order to be able to call it. Um, and then we call set information job objects. And this is going to take the job handle that we created before, and it's going to actually put those flags that we specified onto it. And then we assign the process that we took in to the job object. Uh, so this is going to say, this is the process that I want to get killed if Flashpoint Secure Player closes, right? <coughs> And then we just clean up the uh, the memory that, that we marshaled. So, if you look where this is actually called from, right, we have this function that I wrote called start process create breakaway from job. Now, this is actually meant to be a sort of shim for process.start. Because what we need to do is we need to call, if I just scroll down here, we need to call create process with a specific flag, uh, the creation flags, if we look at that, um, we need to call it with this create breakaway from job flag. The reason this is necessary is because the Flashpoint launcher actually uses uh, jobs as well, uh, and jobs are inherited, so the Flashpoint secure player is going to inherit that job, and if we create this process normally, it's also going to inherit that job, and we don't want that, we want to assign it our new job that we created. So 
we have to tell the new process that we're creating to break away from the current job. The thing is that C Sharp's built in process.start does not allow you to specify this flag. So that's why uh, I basically uh, wrote a function that recreates the behavior of process.start and it takes in uh, process start info just like uh, process dot start does and uses it in a similar way, um, but it calls create process manually uh, so that we can pass that flag. So <clears throat> the first thing that we do uh, is we take in uh, this process start info and we call this function get create process command line. Now, if we look in here, this is actually basically just a verbatim copy of a function that's in the C Sharp uh, .NET reference source called build command line. Um, <clears throat> and what this uh, function does is it, because the uh, process, dot, uh, process start info, it has a file name member and an arguments member, uh, those need to be taken and converted into the format that the Windows create process uh, function understands. Um, there's actually kind of an interesting bug with this function, at least I believe it to be a bug, uh, which is that what it does, right, is it takes in the file name and arguments, and it, if you've ever wondered, you know, like, how does, you know, .NET actually use these, right, all it does is it basically just concatenates them together. So it creates this command line string builder, which is going to become the result. Um, it trims the file name, and then it checks if the file name starts with and ends with quotes. If it doesn't, then it puts quotes around the file name, and then it just puts a space, and then it pastes the arguments onto the end. And <clears throat> that's actually kind of a, a bug, right? because it doesn't actually attempt to, like, escape quotes that are within the file name. So I've actually created a simple proof of concept here to demonstrate what's wrong with this, right? So if we look um, in the folder for this, I have a, just like a basic, you know, default Windows Forms app, and then I also have a file called hello.exe. And if we use shell execute, which is the default for uh, process.start, and I start this app up, then you'll see what really should happen is I hit this uh, start process button. It calls process.start, but it says it can't find the file because there's no file that's called hello.exe and then a quote and then world. There's a file called hello.exe, but it needs to match the entire name, right? If I change use shell execute to false, though, then the C sharp uh, process.start function does nothing to protect you uh, from the uh, quote here. So what it's doing, right, is it's taking this file name, it's putting a quote here and also here, right, and then this is getting getting interpreted as the command line. So it's getting interpreted as hello.exe in quotes, and then world just becomes an argument. Uh, this is kind of reminiscent of like an SQL injection where you like put a quote and then some stuff after like drop table, whatever, uh, that you want after the end of the string. Um, so this is kind of bad, although if you can control what the file name being passed to process.start is, you already have full control. It's just kind of a funny thing that you, you would actually be able to specify the arguments just using the file name field. You would assume that the point of having the file name and arguments separate is that it can like filter it and protect you from uh, that sort of injection, but it, it doesn't. Uh, so that was just an interesting thing about the c sharp process start function i wanted to point out um <clears throat> but anyway this is basically just a copy of that and i don't attempt to fix the bug here i do clean up the code just a little bit to put it in uh, my code style and make it look i think a little bit nicer but it does the exact same thing 
with the bug because this is intended to be compatible uh, with the function uh, that comes with C sharp. So I actually fix this problem further up from where this function is called, uh, and I escape my file name string uh, further up in my program. <clears throat> so anyway, we get we we basically do the same thing uh, that the process dot start function is does, which is that we just you know throw quotes around the uh, file name if they aren't there. Uh, we pass the create breakaway from job flag, which is going to you know, do the behavior that we want for this process. <clears throat> and um, beyond that, I mean, uh, this is basically just a super light wrapper around create process, which uh, process.start actually is too. Uh, I didn't realize just how light of a wrapper it was. I assumed always that it did a lot more. Uh, the one thing that we don't do here is we don't um, like try and connect to the standard output or standard error of this process because that would require a lot more marshalling and native code calls that are really complicated. So uh, we don't do that here because it really isn't necessary uh, to forward that, um, but um, we just create the process. And then this is where we use that process sync here. So when we create the process, another flag that we pass is this create suspended um, flag. So it's going to create the process, and the process is just going to be frozen uh, when it starts. This is because we want to avoid a race condition, because on Windows 7, a process can only have one job object attached to it. So if the process starts, and it immediately it tries to assign itself to a job object, uh, then there could be a race here where um, where it tries to assign itself to a job object, and we are also trying to assign it to a job object. And whether or not it succeeds just depends on who does it first. Um, now, on Windows 8 onwards, you can actually have multiple um, job objects on a single process, although it's a little bit weird. You can have multiple assigned, but at any given time, only one is actually like taking priority and like actually uh, acting. And so we want to make sure either way that this is done in a consistent order. Uh, this has never actually really caused problems. As far as I know, none of the software in Flashpoint actually uses uh, job objects, but uh, we want the behavior to be consistent uh, just in case. So we get the process by its ID, which we just created. This is just an easy way to get uh, a sort of C-sharp process object from the native uh, function call. And then we call process sync.start on it. That's going to assign it to the job object like we saw before, right? And then we call resume thread, and that is going to cause the process to actually start. And that is how we get uh, the two processes synced together. The only thing that's left to do after we call this uh, start process create breakaway from job uh, function is we just wait on the other process to exit. So here we call wait for exit. We don't actually want the inverse to be true, right? We don't assign the Flashpoint Secure Player itself to the job object uh, because um, we want to be able to clean up after it, right? So we don't want Flashpoint Secure Player to get killed if the other process exits. Uh, we just want it to wait for the other process to exit, and then when it's done, you know, it can exit normally. Uh, so let's see this now in action. Start up Flashpoint. Okay, and uh, I'll just pick a game. So we'll go with a 3D groove game, why not? Alright, the game is running now, so now if I go in here, and I go and end Flashpoint Secure Player, the game also exits. So you can see that the two are synchronized together, and that's how we do it. We do it with job objects. Um, so yeah, that's how it's done.